Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. Deganji doing political commentary for the Media Speaks, bringing you the massive Fukushima update. Uh, the only, the well, one of the only shows that even remember that Fukushima is in fact still very important for our times. Before I get into it, uh, I was talking about diet and eating, or as seems to be the case around here, lack of eating, about how someone is always, if you eat like really crappy food, or if you drink so like, so this is here, this is death. It's uh, 151 and Coke. The 151 isn't what kills you, it's the Coke. Um, we got to talking about this after a friend of mine gave me that before I went on air. As you can see, I've drank very little of it. Although, I'll tell you what, throughout all of it, I'm going to drink the whole thing down and see how I sound. Why? You might as well have some fun on Fukushima Day. And let me tell you why. I'm going to get serious before I drink this because I don't really have any good news for any of you. The, the things I'm going to report on here are actually uh, quite bad, actually. They're, they're horrible. They're things you don't want to know about. However, I do want to get into this thing that I was talking to Christelle about with diet. Reminds me, uh, people eat such horrible things, like she's going to eat hot dogs for dinner, like the only other thing she's had but a chicken sandwich which came from a fast food restaurant. What happens when you do that? Yeah, any of you, and we're going to get to Fukushima, we're going to get to all the nuke news, don't zone out. Anybody from the Cleveland area ever listen to Mike Trevisano? He had... Uh, we, we've got David Justice in the Cleveland Indians, and no matter what he did, he was always hurt. Every time you needed David Justice to step to the plate, he was hurt. And Mike Trevisano had this loop that he had made as a joke, and he did a mock interview with uh, David Justice once, and he goes, David, how you doing? Are you looking forward to playing the Yankees? My knee hurts, my back hurts, my leg hurts, my elbow hurts, my chest hurts, my ribs hurt. Oh, I understand, David Justice. And uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think the Yankees are looking really formidable this year? My head hurts, my neck hurts, my ear hurts, my shoulder hurts, my foot hurts, my toe hurts, my ass. You get the point. No matter what question he asked, he played the same loop. And it reminded me in a very large degree of some of the things that we see today with our diet, which we're going to report on uh, with other shows. But it ties into Fukushima, too. The whole joke ties in. Because people are eating poison food every day. If you're eating something that comes from Oregon, California, Oregon to a lesser degree, California, Washington, Alaska, not much grows there, Hawaii, you are poisoning yourself. And it might be that you're not doing a Cristal and eating hot dogs and fast food as the only two things you had all day. Uh, you might not be doing what I'm about to do today, which is I had a piece of pizza and a breadstick and a half, and I'm not going to get anything else today because I've been preparing the show and doing other things, and now I'm going to drink rum and pop. First drink, incoming. I'm going to drink poison. Maybe you're not doing that. Maybe you're eating all organic. And this all ties into Fukushima. Welcome to the Correct Views. We're a show like no other. Um, maybe it all ties in. Maybe you're eating organic. Maybe you're doing everything right. Well, you know what? California grows organic food. Your leg hurts. Your back hurts. Your ears hurt. Your nose hurt. I understand. I understand. So what are you eating every day? Well, I eat all organic. My back hurts, my elbow hurts, my shoulder hurts, my rib hurts, my stomach hurts. All right. So you eat all organic. Where's your food come from? It comes from California. My eyes hurt, my balls hurt, my ankle hurts, my tendons hurt, my breath. Do you get it? Okay, I'm being silly. I'm being funny because I, be, I can be grim. I can give you the news all grim or maybe I can make you laugh a little bit. But maybe it all ties in together. Maybe it is something that is really important, and maybe you want to pay attention, because that's, uh, that's my prologue. There you go. Welcome aboard. The Correct Views. Here's your massive Fukushima update. This is from e, &E News, BBC. Uh, people taken from the movie theater by police forced to go into the reactor and deal with burning fuel rods. A TV military picked men up off the street to battle the meltdown. 
women, minorities, homeless, and prisoners used by the nuclear industry for the most dangerous of work. Do you understand this? For whatever reason, somehow they ended up on the list of people that were going to help Fukushima. And now not only can they not get out of it, but they are being forced to go to the reactor and poison themselves. Listen to this. Uh, BBC Windscale, Britain's biggest, biggest disaster. Look up uh, Windscale if you don't know what it is. Tom Toey, deputy manager at Windscale Plutonium Production Plant. <coughs> we were trying to push the burning fuel back into the reactor. Now, for those of you that may have tuned in to the massive Fukushima update by dumb luck, do you have any idea what coming anywhere near burning nuclear fuel does to you? Okay, we're not talking about burns in the traditional sense, although that can happen. Nuclear fission burns. Man-made nuclear reactions burn hotter than the sun. Many of these atoms that get into your body from nuclear fuel, and this is important to understand, they burn hotter than the sun. And they're inside of you. You don't feel it because it's happening at a very microscopic level. However, you don't feel cells dividing in your body. You feel if they don't divide, that's, we, have a norm, we have a name for that. That's called cancer. You feel it if, you don't, if they don't divide. However, you don't feel your cells dividing. Well, guess what? You don't, feel your, you don't feel your cells mutating from the hot particle that you didn't feel in you to begin with. But that will change your cell depletion. And guess what that'll do? That will give you the aforementioned cancer. Okay. So now that we're on the same page, now that everybody that's tuned into the show is caught up, we're going to go on. We were trying to push the burning fuel into the reactor. The heat had melted the cartridges, though, so they were stuck in the core. Radiation was so intense that they could only work for a few hours, and they were running out of firefighters. This is from the Neville Ramsden Windscale Health Physicist. The police from the plutonium factory had turned up looking for volunteers, and they brought a bus. They decided that the best way to get the volunteers was to go up to the cinema and volunteer the back two rows at the show to go push the fuel rods out of the reactor. Christelle, my dear, I am burning up in the studio room. Yorkshire Television, children of Chernobyl at it's four minutes into the length that's here at e, e News. When the robots, robots broke down because of the extreme radioactivity, men were sent to the cleanup site. They were not volunteers. They were picked up off the streets and press gang that is taken by force onto the roof. At 90 seconds, they received their permissible lifetime dose of radiation. Thank you, Christelle. The men were sent home and forgotten. They do not figure in any official casualty lists. And this is from Professor Kate Brown, C-SPAN. This is a 35 minutes into the video at E&E News. When there was an accident at Hanford, when there was some dangerous ground that needed to be worked, they sent in these temporary worker prisoners from the camps nearby. Minority laborers, basically jumpers, and we all know, look up jumpers, Chernobyl, if you don't know what happened. Most of them died a miserable death, and their family cries to this day, for those of you that think it's not important. They were jumpers, and they were told to work in dangerous ground, unmonitored. That means they have no idea how badly they would juice because nobody cared about them. And they'd leave with many possible radioactive isotopes they had ingested without any epidemiological trace. The plutonium cities presented a picture of healthy pink populations, and this was a mirage. In other words, the uh, radioactivity was oftentimes on their clothes, and they brought it home to the innocent children, mothers, brothers, sisters, uncles, cousins, who were at their house. 
Welcome to the massive Fukushima update. We get real, don't we? The job of refining plutonium, 42, 30 minutes into this, was often given to women. I'm a feminist and I care about women's rights. Yeah, well, you didn't care about this, did you? You didn't even know about it. It's one of the dirtiest jobs. The DuPont, they'd write the Army Corps, maybe since we're going to make this super poisonous product, we shouldn't hire women who were younger than the menopausal age. What about fertility problems? What about mutants and monsters in offspring, which we have now seen since, by the way? They were real nervous about it. They knew a great deal, and they were very worried. DC Bureau, Bureau when the enormous problem, it goes on, of high-level nuclear waste became apparent, white workers ordered African Americans to deal with the deadly mess and disposal involved in dumping plutonium straight into the soil. I thought only America did that. Mr. Lindsay was recruited from his job as a segregated school principal to commute several hours from Greenwood, South Carolina, like thousands of other African-American workers, and was given the most dangerous jobs in order to throw the disometer in a bucket before going into high-risk areas. What that means is they took black people, made them get juiced made them throw away the monitor that tells them how badly they were juiced, go home and die quietly of cancer. Yeah. You're worried about the N-word? You're worried about a freaking flag? Why don't you worry a little bit less about certain words, Mr. Mrs. Black Lives Matter, and why don't you care a little bit more about radionuclides being forced into the bodies of black people as they die of cancer. Because your average Kid Rock fan flying the Confederate flag doesn't have anything against you, Mr. Average Black Person. I'm Mr. Average White Person. Nice to meet you. Um, I have nothing against anyone of any race and any color at any time for any reason. What I'm saying is we're seeing all this uprising about the Confederate flag. Meanwhile, innocent black people, and I support them every bit as much as I support innocent white people, by the way, are being juiced and given diseases and illnesses of all variety from the nuclear industry. And I guarantee if you type in black African Americans, nuclear, you're only going to get one link, and that's going to be to this show. Isn't it kind of strange that I'm the only one that bothers to care about this? But guess what? Because I do care about it. Why? Because I don't think like la black lives matter. I think all lives matter. That includes black lives. Because we're all part of the human freaking race, dumbass, and we're being poisoned here. Reuters. Police say Japanese gangsters rounded up homeless men to clean up Fukushima radiation. Many homeless people were put into dormitories and left with no pay at all. So, it's not a matter of your race or your color. It's a matter of the downtrodden of all societies being used for the worst evils and the worst repercussions imaginable. Things like cancer. You want to get the top of your head cut off and have a piece of your brain cut out and maybe certain parts of your body won't work right anymore. Maybe you won't be able to talk right because you tried to save your life by getting rid of the cancer. Because if that doesn't sound like fun to you, guess what? I pray to God it never happens to you or me because it doesn't sound like fun to me either. And I don't care what color you are. But this is what's happening in the world. And this is why I'm asking you to share this video. Otherwise, I would happily go downstairs and drink my rum without doing it. I give huge segments of my life to this show for a reason, people. Are you even hearing the report here? Yes, I'm angry because this is happening all around us and my country is debating whether or not gay people should get married. An Ed Grover, United Nations special rep reporter, 15, 30 minutes into it, these Fukushima workers told me, do not 
No, we're actually living in a shanty town. Literally, we live on pavement in Tokyo. They told me that people come to take them and make them work at Fukushima. You understanding it yet, people? Or are you still somehow blissfully unaware of what's going on here? This is the Associated Press. I found this in the next one, both on e and &E News, but it's actually an AP story. I think I need some of this rum I told you about. I told you I was going to have this gone by the end of the show, didn't I? We need it. Photographer. I could... It says foul. It's a typo. I could feel a buzzing in the air when in Fukushima. How do you show that in a picture? The government experts, Fukushima radiation affected telescopes used to detect space weather thought to be related to the decay of plutonium. What does that mean? You tune into the correct views because I make the impossible lyrical acrobatics that these scientists write make sense, and I'm going to do so now. The plutonium coming out of Fukushima is so strong, we know it's damaged our robots. You can find that on youtube.com slash the correct views and other episodes. The radiation is so bad that it is affecting telescopes that were used to detect radiation. And this matters. You want to know why it matters? Let's get real. Let's get real on the correct views today. How about that? You want the mess of Fukushima update? Let's get real. I'm about to get married. I'm marrying Christelle. Well, guess what? She because of the way she eats, she won't limit things like milk, cheese, whatever. She, I'm bad. I have very bad eating habits. She has atrocious eating habits. Well, atrocious eating habits used to just mean you might get a little tubby. And no, she's not tubby. She's absolutely gorgeous. My point being, it used to be a matter of you get a little tubby. You, you get a little bit uh, uh, run down and you need to take some extra vitamins to make up for it. You know what? I take vitamins every day to make up for how bad my diet is. It's different. We're going to get real on the correct views. She is going to put herself at a huge risk every day just because she, you know, she wants a little bit of cheese. You know what? It's not safe to eat cheese right now. We both do. She eats more than I do, but we both do. I had a piece of pizza today. It's the only thing I had all day to eat. I might be visiting my soon-to-be wife someday on a cancer bed and she claims to have quit smoking i have no reason to doubt her she has lied to me prior but she says she quit smoking what if she really did does she deserve to get cancer from eating a piece of cheese and i know you're gonna laugh before you laugh at me that's not something that i came up with look up dr helen caldicott you want to get more real on the correct views my personal view of Helen Caldicott is that politically speaking, she's a nutcase. She believes that everything has to do with some male, inf she thinks men think that they think they're better than women. She thinks that nuclear weaponry is tied to the male fascination with his penis. Yes, she said this. She doesn't believe in God. She believes that man is warming the planet. Okay, I think the woman is as wrong, politically speaking, as a human being can be. Helen Caldicott has never once replied to anything that I've ever put on her site. Guess what? She has never once taken down one of my shows from her site either. And let me tell you why. When I talk Fukushima, she agrees. Why? A much, not all of it. A lot of it comes from Arnie Gunderson. A lot of it comes from Michiaku. A lot of it comes from uh, Arnie Gunderson, um, Lauren Moway, uh, Alex Jones. My hero is Chris Busby. A lot of it comes from Helen Caldicott. And guess what? I've done the research. When Helen Caldicott says it and it's nuclear, it is right. 
You want to get real? She's going to say I'm a long-haired freak with tattoos, that I'm a libertarian and I'm part of the problem in the world, if she even spoke about me at all. She'd say that she doesn't like my political views on global warming, and she would say that I am right on things nuclear. My point being that this brings everything together from here at 420 in the morning, many walks of life. People that do not agree on anything can look at these simple facts that are given here and see. Just see. It says the paper describes the global mound detector network data applied to Tahoku earthquake and Fukushima reactor power plant failures. And it show, shows on here, figure two shows hints about 1% cosmic ray anthropy during the earthquake. In other words, the plutonium count is so high that it is disrupting telescopes used to measure it. You can find it here again. Vnenews.com. Photographer could feel buzzing in his ear. So he feels the radiation around him. David uh, Gutenfelder from the Associated Press were trying to show that the place is contaminated. And radiation is, of course, invisible. So we had to rely on mood. And we had to rely on this. You felt like the place was buzzing when you were there. But how do you show that in a picture? That was a real challenge, just as emptiness. You're feeling afraid and anxious. In other words, your body is initiating a fight and flight, even if you don't know the radiation is there. It wasn't in their heads. There wasn't some machine that told them to feel it. They felt it intrinsically. They felt it the way, how many of you have ever had somebody walk into the room and you can tell when they're there? Uh, I'm a DJ and uh, fortunately, uh, nobody there is untrustworthy because the only way you can come into the DJ booth is by coming in behind me and the music is so loud that I can't hear you. Um, there'll be people that use that to kill me tomorrow. Um, we have floor guys. Don't try it. Um, I know. I would say about 75 to 80 percent of the time, maybe as high as 90 percent of the time, I know there's somebody behind me before I see them. And don't tell me I see their shadow. I don't see their shadow. I don't have any glass in front of me. I can feel it. It's 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 an uh, it's a perception that isn't part of the five senses. People that are in Fukushima are reporting the same kind of thing. For me to put it in words, that's why you tune in. Um, I got lots of stories to get to. This one this story is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. I've been uh, L-A-U-G-H-I-N, McLaughlin, not Lynn. I've been saying it wrong for like a year. Mike McLaughlin, uh, writing some of the best fiction and uh, political commentary today. Look him up on Facebook, Mike McLaughlin. Tell him you heard about him from me. Officials, much of the Pacific Ocean is threatened by Fukushima releases, an area covering one-third of the globe. U.S. states in region understandably concerned for safety, urgent need to assess impact on food and water. One of my, fa one of my favorite things that Alex Jones does, and people, I got accused today on an InfoWars uh, comment line, Someone said, why don't you kiss Alex Jones's boot? That's ridiculous. I have said that I support the man. I support Alex Jones greatly. I do. And I will continue to do so. Now, if Christella was up here, she would tell you. If I think that he's wrong, I'll say that he's wrong. Um, when I interviewed Judge Jim Gray... There was something that he was in favor of, and I told him on the phone while interviewing him that I didn't agree, and I supported his right to say it. I'm not kissing anybody's boot here. That ain't going to happen. However, one of the things that Alex does say that I absolutely cherish, and I'm stealing it, I'm going to do my Alex Jones impersonation. I wish that Kyle was here. I told you things were bad. Things were even worse than I thought they were. Right, that's the best I can do. Um, I had told Christelle, and again, if she was in the same room, and if you donate more money, she will be. Our sound booth is in a separate room. She would tell you that I told her that I thought that Fukushima could affect, infect a quarter of the world. And I thought that maybe I, 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 was, I was 
being uh, an alarmist, to quote the song I wrote. No! It's a third of the world! It's worse than I thought it was! Marshall Islands Journal, July 28th, 2014. Seawater check for radioactivity. The International Atomic Agency visited the Marshall Islands earlier this month, and you'll see right why they're recasting this, this article now in 2015. And it was uh, to train local officials to sample seawater for radioactive cesium. The IAEA project is called Marine Benchmark Study on the possible impact of the Fukushima radioactive releases in the Asian Pacific region. One third of the world is affected. Well, it's not 2015. Well, let's move on, shall we? IAEE Technical Cooperation Program 2011 through 2015. Marine benchmark study of the possible impact of the Fukushima radioactive releases in the Asian Pacific. The reason they read the earlier one was as a reference to prove that they predicted it, and by proxy, so did I. This radioactive contamination could be transported and circulated through the Pacific Ocean. And that would be the ocean near California for you Kesha fans. Member states have expressed concern about the possible impact of these releases on the coastal zones. An urgent and harmonized regional approach is essential. The area potentially affected may encompass must, much of the Pacific Ocean, and it covers one-third of the area of the globe. Why does that matter? Because right after I'm done with the Fukushima update, she did this to me last month. Christelle came in the room with macaroni and cheese with tuna in it. I had just done a report. The, the oxygen was still, the, I guess it'd be carbon dioxide, was still in the air from my fat ass speaking about the dangers of this. And she sits down and eats tuna. What? She didn't listen. What? She deserves to die of cancer? Do you have a loved one that won't listen to this video? Okay, fine. Does that person deserve to die of cancer? Because that's what we're talking about here. One third of the world one in three of the entire population. And you got to remember that since almost a third of the world is starving and doesn't even have access to Cristel's poisonous tuna, that would mean more. Because you can factor out one third of the world. Unfortunately, a third of the world is starving to death. So if Fukushima is infecting one-third of the world, and a third of the world has no access to even infected food, do you realize how many people are infected and affected by Fukushima? I hope you do. I hope you're tuning into the correct views because I give this to you in ways that nobody else does. Guys, I got four stories left. I'm going to go long today. I would like to go downstairs and chill with Christelle. I'm going to be dead real on air tonight. I'm going to be dead real. I wasn't even in the mood to do a show tonight. I wanted to enjoy my rum. I had friends over after we got off the show. I was ready to chill. But I'm not. Why? Because there's going to be people eating poisonous food that don't know that the food is poison. There are facts out there that I'm going to give them if I die in this chair to freaking do it. And Christelle will agree. I told her when I, started, when I started this show that I was going to start it teeth out. I'm not putting my hair back to look like some pretty boy. I'm not going to hide my tattoo. I'm going to give you facts, and I'm going to put down the sources of where they are. And I want you to show this to other people. And if you hate my videos, good. Take my facts, take my sources, and make better videos. You have my invitation to do so. Make sure you leave a dislike and a comment on the way out just to add, to add it. I don't care. I just want the information out there. That's all I want. Sputnik, higher radioactivity detected at Fukushima amid forest fires. Dated July 2nd. Friends, 
many of you don't know. Many, many of you are too young to know. I, I, I'm 42. Christelle is like almost 27. We're, we have like a 15-year age gap. She didn't know any of this when I met her. I pick on her for what she eats now. For those of you that don't know why I'm talking about Christelle, she's in charge of the lights and the camera. I went to college, learned it, taught it to her. She did amazing. She's part of the show, so I could talk about her. Kind of like Rush talks about Snurdly. Um... She didn't know about this. I mean, what, she's born in, what, 86? No, Chernobyl happened in 86. She was barely a glimmer in the eye of her uh, parents, if you will. She didn't know about it. Maybe you don't know about it. So let's talk about it for a second. In 1986, besides the shuttle disaster, 86 was a really bad year. Um, Chernobyl melted down. C-H-E-R-N-O-B-Y-L, for those of you that don't know. You can look it up in case you're doubting me because, you know, I have long hair and tattoos. Um, It created the, at the time, worst nuclear disaster ever. And now I sound like an airline documentary. How many of you, it's the worst disaster in U.S. history. And then you watch another airline investigation and they say the same thing. How many of you like those shows? Let me know in the comment line. The worst disaster at the time in terms of nuclear power plants, not bomb testing, would have been Chernobyl. Many people say that it was Chernobyl that led to the end of the Soviet Union. It wasn't uh, Gorbachev and uh, Reagan, although Reagan had a lot to do with it, as did Gorbachev. But it was the stigma, because again, Russia built these things. It was the stigma of Chernobyl happening after Mavac. Of course, they hid Mavac. If you don't know what Mavac is, you have permission to shut my show off. Don't listen to anything else. Go listen to what happened in Mayak in Russia. After Mavac and after Chernobyl, nobody trusted anything nuclear that was Russia. And it's interesting to note, maybe it happened by chance. I'm not going to say... But many parts that were affected by Chernobyl uh, were dropped by Russia. They're the Ukraine today. And uh, the deformities, you want to talk about deformities. You want to talk about, and I love horror movies. Ask Christelle, and she'll do it with me. We can watch Saw, and we'll eat a bowl of lasagna, and we'll laugh all the way through it. I ain't got a problem with horror movies. I, I don't bother me a bit. I don't like watching real people die. I, I watched Faces of Death because I was told I should. I watched the whole thing. I don't like watching real death. I like horror movies because I spend so much of my life bringing you this, this that I feel like I have to. I bring you so much of this that when I watch a horror movie, it's fiction. When I listen to death metal, I'm not a Satanist. When I listen to death metal and obituaries talking about drinking blood, I love it. It's not real. If you can deal with real horror, and I've seen the pictures, I use the pictures to educate people. I don't spend much time looking at these pictures. I've shown them to Christelle, didn't bother her. Guess what? I bet Christelle never wants to see another one. You want to talk about deformities? And you're talking to somebody who just told you. I can I can watch Saw and eat a bottle of lasagna. Don't bother me a bit. I can watch you pick up a handful of worms. I can eat oriental noodles like the Lost Boys. Won't bother me a bit. I'm not grossed out. I'm not talking about being grossed out. I'm talking about really being bothered inside of you. I said we were going to be real this show. You want to be bothered? You want to, we want to look at something that you ain't going to want to look at again? I'm not talking about fiction where some guy gets his head cut off. That's great. I'll watch it with you all day. Look up Chernobyl deformities. Look up Belarus deformities. Look up Ukrainian birth defects. I promise you, unless you're some kind of nutcase, unless you're really, really damaged, you're not going to like what you see. Well, those radionuclides that caused those defects that you will see if you look that up, 
those radionuclides are babies today. Babies. They're still, they got millions of years left. Again, I'll quote Helen Caldicott. I think she's a nutcase. She thinks I'm a nutcase. But guess what? We agree here. We'll agree. This forest fire is sending all of the radionuclides into the air to poison everyone again. And if you're not near Russia and you're not near the Ukraine, it matters because we live in a global market and things get sent to you. Food gets sent to you. Imports get sent to you. Your country brings in anything from the Ukraine. It could be a rope. They make rope there. It could be anything. And that is infected. And everyone that touches it will get some of this fallout on them. Um, do you know that I think it was Lauren Moray that said you could get you could die of cancer and get buried in the ground a thousand years from now someone can dig you up like a mummy like we do today and the radionuclides that are in your body when they dissect you if they happen to touch the skin of the person dissecting will do the same thing to that person that it did to you and they will die the same way that's fact. It's absolute fact. I wouldn't be out here talking if I wouldn't. If it wasn't, I should say. Wildfires in the vicinity of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant have led to high levels of the radioactive isotope cesium-137 in one of the fire sites, according to measurements taken by the Ukraine's nuclear inspectorate. Uh, Want to know what cesium is? All right, David Lake, if you're listening, you better leave a comment because he loves this story. Member of the Mediaspeaks.com, as is the show. Um, bands like to pick spooky names. Like I just talked about obituary. You got death. Ooh, death. You've got all these bad pestilence. Ooh. Cesium 137 is also a band name. They wanted to be aggressive. They're more electronic. They wanted to be, get your attention with terror. Cesium-137. Good name, by the way, if you want to do that. Cesium-137 is in 